Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com and today we're going to put a new chain onto a fixed gear bike. If we have a look behind me you can see we've got bikes all over the place. So let's dive in and have a look at what we're going to use to start with. So first things first, the yellow one is going to be our new chain which we'll get to in a second. And this is the old chain, this old pink one as you can see it's gone all rusty. Now because I ride a fixed gear bike you are meant to keep the chain tension nice and tight, not too super over tight, but just tight enough that it's not slack and wobbling around, which I didn't, and that ultimately led, because I let it get slacker and slacker, to a proper, proper break in the chain. As you can see, the metal's just completely broke there on that link, and the tool that we need for changing the chain, don't want to say chain, chain, chain too much through this video, um, is one of these. Now this is a Cyclo, I don't know, Rivio or something like that. It's got a fancy name, but basically these are what you use to pop out the individual rivets of the chains. And some people call them chain breakers. They're basically the same thing. It's just something that you can use to push these rivets in and out to either put the chain together or take it apart. I'll start by giving you a quick demonstration of how this works on the broken chain. Um, because obviously once I've got this going on the bike it'll be quite tricky for me to try and film it and get everything in shot while I'm actually genuinely trying to fix my bike. Um, so you'll find on new chains that they will either come already just in a perfect circular chain or they will come like this with one of the rivets already half out. So you can pop it on your bike and then uh, just pop this into the bizarre screwing mechanism and then you've literally, as you'll see in a second, just twist this down and that slowly, slowly and hopefully safely locks that through to make it a complete chain again. So to use one of these, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You just pop the chain in and then start to turn the handle. Once it gets to a certain level, you'll find that these could be extremely tight. And you certainly don't want to put your thumb there because if you start screwing that up on your skin, wow. Now that was extremely difficult to get it to start coming out, but as you can see there, it's already poking the rivet through. And now that it's started moving, it's a lot easier to keep twisting. And you can see just how it's simple and easy it is that once it's going, look how quickly and easily that's come straight through. And we can, if we so wish, I don't recommend it, but we can push that straight out, which just like that could well completely fly out. Apologies as I'm starting to get oil all over my hands. And then untwist the thing and you can see, there we have it. We have further destroyed this chain. Um, you can also, if we just give that a wiggle, pop out each individual component of what makes up the chain. And if you so wished, you could take every piece of the chain apart, but that's not what we're here for. Right, now I'll give you a quick close-up demonstration of what one of these actually is. We're going to do the same as that, but only, instead of obviously pushing it out, we're going to push this one back in, and hopefully everything will go nice and smoothly. We'll just have a quick look at the bike that we're working on here. This is a Mango Bikes Fixie. It's got a flip-flop back wheel, so you can have single-speed fixed or free wheel. I have normally have it on the, well, in fact, about 90% of the time plus, I have now used it as a fixie. I think it's 44 teeth on the front and 16 on the back, something like that. Now, anybody unfamiliar with how a fixie works in terms of chain tensioning, obviously because you haven't got gears, you don't have a derailleur like this to have that sort of spring-loaded way to keep the chain at a reasonable tension, which means the chain itself has to be the right size and has to obviously be at a nice tension when you actually put it on. So our simple tensioning mechanism here is you have your standard bolts that keep the wheel actually locked in place. So we'll slacken those off and then what we'll also do is use these ones at the back which then start to pull the wheel further or let it go further in. So that's either moving it backwards or forwards slightly until you've got the correct chain tension and also, or very importantly, have the wheel actually running down the centre of the uh, bike frame. We start with the simple job of just undoing these bolts at the side. They're the ones that hold the wheel in place. 
you'll notice that once both of these are loosened, because there's no chain on the bike at the moment that would be holding the wheel in place to some extent normally, certainly not solidly in place, but you'll notice without the chain, this wheel will literally slide straight out as soon as those two bolts are loosened. Um, something as well I'll just point out here is once I put the chain on originally I realised that I did have to knock out a couple of links to make it the right size for this bike so that was just the same process as I've just shown you on the table literally just pop it in and push the rivets straight out and then obviously you need to make sure that the links that you've got aren't two of the same type because there's I'd call them outer and inner links so obviously you need an inner to like link up to an outer and as you can see, this is as simple as it comes. It's really just the trickiness and the fiddliness of trying to hold everything in place while you do it. And something I'll say as well is don't fall into the trap that I have known one friend fall into when they got a chain that was in a single strip like I just showed you this yellow one was and thought, right, it'll be much easier to link it all up into a circular chain once it's, uh, well, it's not on the bike. And obviously, once you get to put that on the bike, you might discover that it needs to actually thread through the back part of the bike frame. So you have to put it through the frame first before you link it up. And here we finally have it. A lot of fiddling around and I ended up taking two of these links out. But as you can see there, that's looking pretty good. It's just a case now of tightening these back up until it's a nice sensible tension. And then obviously lock the wheel back in place with those. Right, let's get to it. Looking at that now, it's looking pretty sweet to me. I think I'll give it a quick clean up and that'll be me done for the day. Hopefully it will be a long time before I have to fiddle around with this chain again. So thank you very much for watching this quick video. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much with the endless tinkering with the chain length. I would say when it comes to something like this on a fixie and using one of these, the real trick is just take it slowly, have all the patience in the world. It's not, it's not like I say, a particularly difficult job. It's just time consuming and a little bit fiddly. So I'll say thank you once again for watching. Subscribe for a load more biking videos and all sorts of uh, GoPro style through the handlebars filming bike ride commentaries and that sort of stuff. More things like this. A load of videos about living on a boat. And until the next time, have a fantastic day. Like the Facebook page, all that sort of stuff, and farewell.